What's going on, everybody? How to Tuesday, wintertime version. In the wintertime, when the cold fronts come down, one of the things that we really like to do is to start fishing for barracudas. One of the reasons why we like to fish for barracudas is because a lot of the tarpon, the permit, the bonefish, sometimes they leave the flats, leaves us with barracudas. And quite honestly, the barracuda is an outstanding game fish when it's up on the flats. You can fish for them with all different kinds of lures. You can fly fish for them. You can bait fish for them. You can do all kinds of things. Um, they run really hard. They jump. They fight really hard. And in shallow water, they have no place to go but straight out. So they are a really good fish. A lot of the offshore guys don't like barracudas. But inshore, man, I like them. I have no problem with them. They are a fantastic fish. And you can fish for them in a couple of ways where you can get even more out of the fish. Like if you're just kind of slow trolling a mullet or something like that, well, a mullet might not be a good example because a mullet will jump out of the water and you will get a pretty good strike out of them. But say you're slow trolling a, a ballyhoo or something like that. You may not see the barracuda eat the, the ballyhoo. If you are throwing a tube lure, let's say, you're watching that thing come through the water. And a lot of times you can see the barracuda laying on the flat. You throw out in front of them, bring it, and you see this cuda take off and attack your lure. It's really fun. If you haven't done it, I strongly encourage it, especially if you like fishing for northern pike or muskie because the barracuda is far more aggressive. You catch way more of them. They get big and they fight really super hard. So people, in my experience, that have tremendous experience with muskies or pike particularly like these fish. I like them because they offer a lot of surface action, very visual fish. They run, they jump. They're fantastic. So I really like them. A lot of people think that the only way that you can fish for barracudas is with a tube lure or with live bait or something like that. But like I said, you can fly fish for them. We'll use long flies that um, mimic kind of a tube lure or a needle fish or something like that. You can fish for them in a way where you can rip that fly through the water really fast and you can get some bites like that. But my favorite way, and I believe the most effective way, is to fish for them with a standard lure that typically someone would not buy for barracudas. Now, you can see lures that maybe resemble a bait fish like this one. This is a live target lure I'm holding, and it will kind of, it's, it's kind of a swimmer. It doesn't have a diving lip on it. It's just going to kind of sink down a little bit. You're going to pull it and it's going to swim about a foot and a half, two feet under the surface. Something like this is a very good um, lure for barracudas. But what you're missing is that surface action. So this will catch a lot of them, but you're missing the surface action. So my favorite lure of all time is a lure that you might not think would be for barracudas if you first look at it. This is a floater diver that I'm holding in my hand. It's uh, five inches long, has two treble hooks on it, and it has a diving lip. Okay. Now I told you that we're going to be fishing for barracudas, in two feet of water, maybe three feet of water at most. This lure is going to dive to about six feet or, or deeper, depending on how fast you pull it with this, with this lip. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize these lures and we're going to make them way more um, effective for the barracuda in the situation that we're fishing for them. We're going to fish for them in very, very shallow water. So I'm going to take a couple of pairs of pliers, and I'm going to basically tear this lure apart. I've done this on Saltwater Experience a number of times, but a lot of people said that they, did, they couldn't really follow on the show. So we're going to go through it very, very slowly here. And uh, I'll show you exactly how to customize this lure and rig it with the wire and tie it to your line and everything. So you'll be ready to go if you like to fish for barracudas. So the first step is that we have this lure and it's obviously set up to dive. As you pull this lure, it, the faster you pull it, the more it's going to dive and it's going to wobble. So what we're going to do first thing is get rid of this diving lip. It's a clear plastic lip. You could probably break it off with your hand, but we're going to use a pair of pliers. Your fishing pliers work great. What works even better is a pair of pliers that you get from the hardware store, like the ones I have in my hand. And I'm just going to hold the, the lure in the back away from the hooks 
and I'm going to just spin this lip over. And I broke broke the lip off just right right there, and it just broke off straight across. So I'm going to take the 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 pliers, and I'm just going to grab each little side piece here. And I'm just going to break those off too. Okay. So what's left is now a little tiny piece of of the lip, the ring that hold that you tie the lure onto, and a split ring onto that. Okay. We're going to use solid wire, and solid wire and split rings don't like each other. They don't like each other at all. The wire will migrate out of this split ring in some miraculous way, and you'll go to, to um, cast your lure, and you'll make the best cast you've ever made in your life, and it will sail out there so far, and you'll bring it back in, and all you will have is just the end of your wire because the wire has migrated out of the split ring. So we're going to take the split ring off, and we're going to have the wire go directly to the solid eye on the end of the lure. Okay. Split ring pliers are the best. If you have split ring pliers, by all means, you should use those. If you're like me, I have had a lot of pairs of split ring pliers and I never can find them when I need them. So that's on the list for Santa Claus this year, split ring pliers. I have a pair of electrical pliers in my hand that have a pretty good um, grip. Your fishing pliers often will, will do it, but you want a pair of pliers where you can grab that split ring and you can simply open it up a little bit, rotate the lure so that that split ring comes right off. Now, a pair of split ring pliers, if you don't know, has a little tooth that comes off the end. And you put that right in the split ring and it opens it perfectly and holds it perfectly. And it is exactly the tool for the job. I don't have those right now. If you have the split ring pliers, by all means, use them. Now, I'll take the split ring. And I'll put it right in my box because you never know. You might want to use it later. Now, we're getting closer. We have taken off the lip. We've taken off the front split ring. Now, this lure would float. And you would be able to skip it along the surface because it doesn't have the lip. Barracudas, a 20-pound barracuda, which is what we're after, um, will we'll eat this lure uh, a, a foot and a half into its throat. It will eat this in one bite and come over the top of it, and you will have this um, the, the cuda hooked with both of these hooks, and it's a real mess because now you have all the cuda teeth, and you're trying to get this lure out. It's a mess. We're going to release these cudas, so we want to do this in a way that uh, first makes the lure swim the most effective so that you catch the most of them. Secondly, we want to release them unharmed. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this front hook off and I'm going to do it again. Again, if you have split ring pliers, great. All you would already be done by now. I am using these electrical pliers and I'm going to simply just rotate the lure around once I open that split ring up. And I'm going to come away with the treble hook and the split ring. Now, again, I'm going to put this right in my box here because I may want to use that later. This treble hook may get bent. This treble hook may um, get dull or bent, and I may want to switch switch them out. And now I have taken this lure almost completely apart. Floater diver, no lip, no split ring, no split ring on the front place where the treble hook goes, and I took that treble hook off. So I'm left with a lure with no lip and only one treble hook on the very end. That's exactly what I want. This lure is going to be able to, you can hear that it's got some BBs inside of it. So when I cast this way, all the BBs run to the end. The weight goes out that way. And I'm going to be able to throw this the furthest. Now, my favorite lure is a Rebel that is like this, has two treble hooks on it. It's, uh, I guess it's five and a half or six inches long. They typically are a little bit hard to find. That one is my favorite because it's made out of a different type of plastic. The Barracuda do not puncture that plastic very easily. This one, it may last. This is the clear type plastic. I don't know what it's called, but um, it may last. Sometimes Barracudas can just crunch these right in half. So 
that's not my favorite. The Rebel is my favorite. I don't even have any in here because um, I've, I've run out of them. But you can see that I've done this to a lot of other ones. This is one where I've taken even the, the um, back hook off. We're going to use this to tease up fish like Jack Crevels and, um, and other type of fish. See, so something like this has had the paint chewed off of it by some types of fish, probably Jack Crevels in this case. And that's what's going to end up happening to this. See, teeth marks all over these. All over these uh, lures, those are from Jack Gravels or Cudas, either one, um, where they'll they'll beat them up. And if they really get a hold of them, a lot of times they can puncture them. So I'm looking for a lure that is heavy duty enough that it's going to withstand that. A lure like this should be able to last you all season, uh, catch a ton of Cudas on it. So that's how you customize the lure. Now we'll talk about how we are going to uh, tie it onto your to your hook or tie it onto your rod. So what I'm going to use here, mailing, hard wire, solid wire. We're going to put it on with a haywire twist. And uh, this is number four, 40 pound test wire. You could probably go with a lot lighter wire um, if you wanted to, but I find that the heavier wire behaves a little bit better. I like it better. It doesn't seem to the kudas don't seem to care because you're you're ripping this lure across the surface as fast as you can as you can pull it. So they really don't seem to care that um, that it's forty pound wire or thirty pound wire or fifty pound wire or whatever wire you've got. It doesn't doesn't really seem to be a big a big factor in getting them to bite because the lure's moving so fast. So I like to get. Uh, a wire that is a little bit heavier. This 40 pounds seems to be about right. It's stiff enough that, and that it's manageable. And I'll just take a, uh, a length about like this, about foot and a half, two feet, start out with two feet, cut that off. Now I have a two foot piece of wire. And again, I took the split ring off of this lure. So I'm going right through the um the original the eye of the of the uh, lure right there so i go through about five inches four inches up and i kind of bend the wire over now the way i like to do this haywire twist is i like to um pinch it with my pliers not everybody does but you pinch it with your pliers and um Makes it really easy for me to tie a good haywire twist. Now, what's going to happen is we want to turn both of these wires at the same time, and we want the wires to be really wide. I'm going to make another turn like that, and I'm turning these wires together. That's two turns, three turns, four turns, and that's probably enough. Four, five turns. Now I've got it like that. This is my running line. This is my tag end. Take the tag end, and I'm just going to start going around. And I want these to be nice and tight. About four, four times, four or five times right around. And it'll be nice and tight. Okay. So that's the way that it should be looking at this point. Then it's not as super critical on this end, but still important. You want to break this wire off. You don't want to cut it off. If I reach down there and I cut this off, it's going to leave a little eighth of an inch, very, very sharp little razor blade down at the end. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to pull it down towards the lure, and I'm going to rotate it around like a handle. Okay. And it just comes right off. Now this is smooth. Even under tension, I could take my finger and I could run it right along there and it's not going to it's not going to cut me at all. Now on this other end, it becomes much more uh important because you are going to be reaching down 
to this. And if the Barracuda shakes his head and takes off, it will pull that little tag in right through your hand. And a lot of people will open their hands up with a little tag in. It only takes one or two times and you'll never leave that tag end again if you can help it. Or if you know you have a tag end, you'll be super careful. So now we have the lure attached to the wire and we want to attach the wire to our fluorocarbon leader. The fluorocarbon leader is going to be attached to the braid. So I'm going to have this about, about a foot. It's plenty. Because again, you got you to be thinking this lure is going to be moving super fast. So it's not like we're twitch, 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 and the barracuda is going to take it and inhale the whole thing. He's going to be barely able to keep up to it. So he's going to bite the lure in the back. He might go over the lure and get to the wire. But if a barracuda's teeth touches monofilament, it's going to cut it. So no matter what it is. So we need a wire lure, wire leader. So I'm going to go up about a foot and I'm going to bend this over again. Okay. So I bent the wire and now I'm going to take the fluorocarbon. This is 30 pound test um, J braid or J fluoro from Daiwa. Just pull off a little piece here. This is going to go right against the, the wire. And then I'm going to pinch it right here. Pull out a little more tag. And if you want to see this knot, we have the, all the knots on um, Saltwater Experience where I did these, Saltwater Experience YouTube and waypoint where I did these with high vis cords so you can see it even better. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up the wire and I'm going to wrap back down towards the, the, uh, the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. I like a lot of turns on this. Nine, ten times. So what I'm tying is an Albright. Then I go back through this, the the loop in the wire. So now both ends are at the loop. I'm going to pull down hard on the tag end a little bit. I mean on the running line, and pull that right to the end. If I see it's doing that a little bit, I will. Pull that down so it should snug up real nice right up against the wire. I'll trim this, and then this is the really important part. I want to break this tag end off, I don't want to cut it. If I cut it right here with the pliers like that, it's going to leave a little tag end, and if you're holding the lure or holding the line and the CUDA rips it out, it'll open your hand right up. So this is the really important one to break off. I'll take the knot in my fingers like this. This I think is the most important step. You bend it back at 90 degrees and then turn and it'll just break right off in your hand. So if you look at that, Real tight. You can see that that little tag end is nowhere to be seen. It's like actually under the last wrap is where it broke off. So that's smooth. You can go through that. That that will not cut your hand. So I have that on both ends. So I have a haywire twist to the lure, and then an Albright from the wire to the monofilament. And then I'll tie a double uni or whatever to the from the fluoro to the braid. And that's your rig. That is your your CUDA surface lure rig, or at least mine. I'm I'm letting you borrow it too, if you want it. I learned this from Mike Pollock. He's an awesome guy down in Key West. We did a show with him in the Marquesas on Barracudas, which we um you can find on Waypoint. Mike showed me this and it has been 
really good for me. Really um, caught a lot of barracudas like this. I think you will too. I like it much better than a tube lure. A tube lure often goes out there, donuts, and kind of catches itself. And then you pull it back and you don't catch any barracudas. They also tend to catch a lot of grass. This tends to ride up on the surface and, uh, and not catch the grass, but catch the kudas. So there you go. There's the kuda rig. All right, that's How To Tuesday for this week. If you got any questions, why don't you send me a text at 1-305-930-7346. That is area code 305-930-7346. Send me a text. If you don't understand any of these steps or you want me to explain them further, just text me. That's the best way to do it. All right, so that's How To Tuesday for this week. Barracudas on the flats with surface lures. All right, see ya.